Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to be answering some questions about raw diet. I took these questions from YouTube and Instagram uh, that you guys were interested in knowing more about. So I'm gonna be answering those questions and hopefully uh, giving you guys some more information about feeding dogs a raw diet in this video. I do plan on doing more videos about uh, raw diets and just you know how I feed my dogs. So if you have uh, more questions or want a video about a certain topic, just let me know down below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more information. I do make all types of videos about animals. You can also follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. First, I do want to give a shout out to a sponsor for this channel, and that is Five Strand Affordable Allergy Testing. Now, this is very relevant to this video that I'm doing here today because uh, it is so, so important to know uh, what sensitivities your dog has. Uh, a lot of people do switch over to raw because they want their dog to be healthier or because they had an issue uh, like allergies. And it's not gonna help to switch your dog over to a raw diet if you don't know what's causing those allergies. And dogs are still going to have allergies on a raw diet. So it's a lot healthier, um, but there still are certain things that um, some dogs can't be eating. So for example, my dog Caspian cannot eat any chicken or chicken eggs. He's very allergic to basically all things chicken, uh, chicken feathers, chicken poop, chicken eggs, <laughs> and raw chicken. So I have to make sure that he gets different types of protein, um, such as pork or beef um, or lamb. Uh, but if he does get raw chicken, that's very upsetting for his stomach and it gives him a lot of uh, different issues. So I bring up five strand affordable allergy testing because it is very easy to do this on your dog. I was very skeptical, but um, I tried it out and I've tried it for uh, my different dogs. And it has been really cool because I can find out exactly what to feed my dogs in order for them to be healthy. And it's very, very simple. You just take hair samples from your dog and send it into this laboratory and they give you the results. This is much cheaper than going through vet visits and it is very accurate. So it's not a guessing game when you do five strand affordable allergy testing. And it can also be used for humans, cats, and horses besides dogs. So be sure to check them out at the link down below and use my coupon code. Julia Lauren 8, how expensive is it? Okay, so this is a really great question. This is one of my favorite ones to answer, actually. It is cheaper to feed raw um, than it is to buy high quality kibble. I know some people will be very shocked by that answer, but yeah, it's something that I stand by. Now, of course, the cost of living does vary between city to city, state to state, and of course, country to country. But uh, generally speaking, um, you can really get uh, raw food for cheaper than high quality kibble. And the way that I like to look at it is per pound. So um, if I go and look at high quality kibble, and by this I mean kibble that does not have corn, um, the first protein, the, the first uh, list on the ingredients is going to be an animal protein. Um, and it's just not gonna have like fillers and stuff like that. Now they are starting to come back with fillers. They're sneaking them in. so. Even your high quality kibble brands are going to have alfalfa, which is the same thing as corn. Um, they're going to be um, $4 and up per pound. Um, that's about how much it is for the kibble. Um, now, of course, if you um, do a raw diet that where you purchase it or like, you know, the type of raw food that PetSmart offers or things like that, uh, I think that's upwards to $6 or more per pound so that's a lot that's a lot of money uh, now if I go to when I go to the store and I buy my dog's food and I usually want to get like a month's supply of dog food and put it in the freezer um, I do not want to spend more than two dollars per pound on their food and um, usually it's a lot less than that sometimes it can even be less than one dollar a pound and you know that's um, making sure you know you you do the bargain shopping and really like look at prices. Meat prices do fluctuate from week to week. Meat prices can fluctuate. The price of eggs can fluctuate. Um, and then you also have the option of sourcing local. And so there's just a lot of ways that you can find to find meat and buy meat that's um, not going to be very expensive. There's also uh, stores that are for restaurants. Um, they supply um, food and things like that to restaurants. And so they have really large quantities. 
uh, and they're typically going to be cheaper um, than like the local grocery store. So uh, just shopping around, you really can find a way to not make raw expensive. So as long as you're making the food yourself, and it's really easy, it's really easy to make it yourself. Don't be intimidated and think you have to go with one of those companies that prepares it. Just look at what they're putting in. It's, it's not anything you don't have access to. Leopard Gecko, and she says, are you worried about the raw meat contamination. Uh, this is one of the things that has freaked me out when researching raw. Absolutely not. Um, I've, I've never had any worry about it. And it's one of those things I don't quite understand why people are stressed out about when it comes to raw diets. I mean, it's totally normal for you to go to the grocery store, pick up raw meat, um, bring it home, prepare it for your family, and serve it to them. Um, of course, there's cooking involved, but you're still handling raw meat. Raw meat's, you know, out in your kitchen. Uh, it's in your fridge. And so it's all very normal. And you never hear anybody, you know, say, you really have to stop eating meat from the grocery store because the, you know, putting raw chicken on your pan is going to make you sick. That That's not a thing. You never hear that. Um, of course, you do need to take precautions because food poisoning is a real thing. But it's the same precautions you would take when cooking for your family. You're going to wash your hands. You're going to sanitize whatever you're using. Like if you're cutting it and, and you're going to sanitize the cutting board and the knife. And um, yeah, so that's it's just normal precautions when it comes to that. Uh, one of the things I did hear is like, um, you know, putting it in, in the dog's bowl and then leaving it out for them. Well, when you do feed your dog, they should be on a schedule and it should really only take them, you know, maybe at most 15 minutes to eat. Um, I, I think my dogs take like two minutes. <laughs> um, but uh, if you, they're a little bit slower or if it's um, chicken with bone, then they might be taking a little bit longer to actually um, chew their food and eat it. But they're going to eat it in one sitting. And um, yeah, there's, I, I don't see any issue with any type of cross-contamination. Um, you can, you know, sanitize their bowls and stuff, um, clean the floor. Uh, oh, that is actually one of the things about raw that um, sometimes I do like to feed them outside on like the patio or something. Um, if I know that this is going to be a really messy meal, because that is, you know, sometimes a little bit annoying is that they will get um, your kitchen floor or wherever it is that you're feeding them um, kind of dirty. So that's one thing to think about. And you know, you always can feed them on a patio outside and that's perfectly fine. Logically Pastel, uh, does bacteria from raw meat stay in your dog's mouth? Like, is it safe to let your dog lick you? So that, that to me is an interesting question. Is it safe to let your dog lick you? Uh, under normal circumstances, probably not. <laughs> so there's studies that show that having a dog actually builds up the immune system of kids uh, in the house. Like growing up with a dog builds up your immune system. Now the reason that is, is not because dogs are super clean and healthy for you. It's actually because they are bringing in bacteria and things and just exposing your system and that's how your system's building up to be stronger is because it's getting exposed in small amounts and then overall you're going to have a stronger immune system. So dogs um, I guess don't really help um, you know in keeping you safe from not being exposed to anything. Um, they expose you to stuff naturally so um, I think that's kind of something people forget about. Um, so worrying about, oh, my dog's going to expose me to bad bacteria from this raw food. Um, not necessarily. Um, the bacteria is not really going to stay there. Um, they're drinking water, they're swallowing, you know, it's, uh, their saliva is breaking it down and all of that. So it's not really going to stay there. Um, and even with small exposure, uh, I feel like you're already getting exposed to a lot worse if you are letting your dog lick you. Um, dogs are licking their butt and then licking you. And they're going to do that even if you feed kibble. So um, I'm not sure that that's really any worse than raw food. <laughs> uh, 5048 Pug. Is raw better for dogs because I asked the vet and they said it's bad. By the way, love your videos. Thank you. Oh, that's so much to unwrap. I could literally do an entire video just on this question. It's a really good question. 
uh, but I'm gonna try to be as brief as possible. So a lot of vets do still support feeding kibble to your dog. Um, most local dog and cat vets are gonna tell you that raw diets are bad. So the simple answer is, is that they're wrong. Uh, and there's a lot of veterinarians that um, do support feeding raw that you can um, look at their resources and their information if you wanna try that. But the reason that your vet is saying that it's wrong is just essentially they don't understand what a biologically appropriate diet is for a dog. Now we put so much pressure on veterinarians. Just think about it, like compared to doctors. And with doctors, we have all of these different types of specialities. Like, um, you know, you, you go to your heart doctor, you go to your allergy doctor, you go to a, a different doctor for um, psychological and mental health. And then you go to a different doctor for your feet and you go to a different doctor for your kidneys. And there's all these different types of doctors that have their specialty. And you're not going to go to your heart surgeon and ask them to give you allergy medication. When it comes to veterinarians, um, we want the veterinarian to be the anesthesiologist and the surgeon and the internal medicine. Uh, we want them to diagnose and treat and do every type of surgery, whether it's going to be for a broken bone or to neuter an animal um, or something else entirely. And then on top of all that medical stuff, we still want them to answer all these questions we have about our dog's behavior and also give our dogs a whole diet plan that's special for their needs and know exactly what their dogs need to eat. Oh, also be the dog's dentist and eye doctor and everything else. Oh, and then on top of that, we also want them to treat cats, all of that too. Oh, and then maybe, maybe let's also throw in hamsters and guinea pigs. So my point is, is that we expect so much of veterinarians and it's just simply not fair, it's not realistic. So I don't think it's too hard to understand that veterinarians are not going to be experts in everything having to do with an animal. <laughs> it shouldn't be hard to understand, but unfortunately that is the misconception, huh? So the truth is, is that your veterinarian does not know what's best for your dog when it comes to diet. And besides all of that, there's a whole other, you know, thing of why I'm probably going on too long. But um, for example, you know, they get taught nutrition classes by companies that push kibble. Uh, they get free kibble for their animals. Um, it's just so, so pushed on veterinary medicine in the United States. And I did a, another video comparing dog foods and I'm, I'm always saying like pedigree, which is super, super cheap. It's one of the cheapest dog foods out there is the exact same thing as Royal Canine, which is one of the most expensive brands at the store. And I'm always saying that these two brands are really the exact same thing. Royal Canin is just pedigree with a different brand slapped onto it. And it's kind of true because uh, both of, the, of those brands are owned by the same company. And that company owns a lot of the major veterinary clinics in the United States. They own the laboratories where these foods are tested and where it's, you know, they come up with what dogs should be eating. So it's all connected. And I, I know kind of sometimes when you go into it, it sounds like this big conspiracy, but it's, it's not. You can research into it and see that this company does own all of these same things. So, you know, it makes sense that they are pushing this product and then pushing these treatments and um, the vets are, you know, being taught this and then working for them. Um, yeah, so yeah, your your vet's uh, not gonna support raw, um, unfortunately, but as time goes on uh, in the last 10 years, I've definitely seen a lot of people and a lot more vets um, coming over to raw. And you know, this, this has been the future for a while and uh, some people are just gonna get there more slowly than others. Erin uh, Da Vinci, uh, at what age can we start feeding raw to dogs? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I recommend cooking the food for your dogs and, okay, so like, let's say that you start off with the puppies being born in your home, uh, and then they start eating food at like four weeks uh, or five weeks, depending. And I would recommend to cook the food, um, until, um, they're probably about 14 weeks at least, and then starting to switch them over to raw. 
um, but gradually. And, you know, it's going to be easier to give them raw beef than to give them raw chicken on the bone. Um, I don't think I gave my dogs raw chicken on bone until they were like um, over six months. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a slow transition. And you can um, start uh, feeding, you know, cooked food for them right away. You never have to have them on kibble. With my corgis, I did have them on kibble, but that was because a lot of them were going to go into homes that were not going to feed raw. Um, and so we um, decided on a high quality kibble to give them. And that's what a lot of them stayed on when they did uh, go into their new homes. Uh, Cindy Driscoll XOXO, how often do you feed your dogs? Uh, so that's a good question. Uh, it is recommended to feed uh, twice a day. I think that that's a really um, good amount for dogs, uh, but that's not the case for all dogs. Um, some dogs do better with once a day. Um, I've kind of noticed this to be more with like larger breeds um, and also, you know, younger dogs. Uh, Caspian, when he was younger, he would just only eat once a day. Um, he just didn't want to eat more than that. And that's perfectly normal. Uh, in fact, it's actually healthy to have those fasting times for dogs. You actually do need to be fasting in order to create certain chemicals in your body in order to um, keep yourself healthy. And that's the same with dogs. And actually with predators like dogs and cats, those fasting periods need to be longer than what it is with humans. Now, if you have a puppy, um, that's different depending on the age of the puppy. Um, you might wanna feed three or four times a day. Uh, if you have a diabetic dog, then it's you know gonna be more often uh, it just depends on the dog situation, but normally for the average healthy dog, I think twice a day is really good. Okay, Noah asks, my dog has kidney issues. Is raw still a good option for him? And if so, how do I go about it? I was really happy to get this question actually because um, I feel like uh, kidney disease is my number one reason to feed raw. Uh, and I've thought about this a lot and there, there's so many different reasons why you would wanna feed your dog raw food. And I was thinking, what is my number one though? Like if I have to choose one reason as to why I would feed raw. And it, to me, I came up with um, kidney disease. That's the main reason I would feed raw. Uh, kidney disease is starting to become so common in dogs and it's um, caused by dehydration. Um, it's you know hard on the kidneys uh, when you're not hydrated and then the kibble really dries out dogs. And on top of that, I mean, it's it's hard to get a human to drink water. Like, I, I have to like get a container where I can measure how much water I'm drinking. You can't tell your dog that. You can't explain to your dog how they need to drink water to be healthy and here, measure your water in this amount every day. For dogs and predators, um, like dogs and cats, they get a lot of their moisture and a lot of their water from the food that they eat. That's just naturally how it's done. There's even animals in the desert where they get their water just from their food sources. And so it's a very natural way for them to get their hydration. And by not giving them that, by giving them dry kibble that's you know, just going to make them more dehydrated, you're putting so much pressure on the kidneys. Now, besides that, if you have all of these things that are in kibble all of these you know ingredients and dyes and things like that that the kidneys are you know still having to to work through and so that contributes to it um, there's chemical compounds that affect the kidneys and i did a whole video on this uh, so I'd, if you're interested in this please please go check out this video because um, dogs that have kidney issues because of kibble are being taken to the vet and then prescribed a different type of kibble that actually makes it worse. And so I you know, broke down all of the science behind this, but essentially the dog food that's prescribed to dogs with kidney disease makes it better at first and then makes it a lot worse. So if your dog has kidney problems, I would absolutely say do not feed them kibble. Uh, definitely switch over to some type of raw food, maybe even uh, with it cooked, it still is gonna have moisture. Um, for dogs that do have um, some health problems, they might have a little bit of a hard time digesting raw, but even just cooking the food is so much better than feeding kibble. Uh, Caitlin Saffron, what is the risks of feeding raw, if any? How much does it cost per month? Okay, so that one I kind of just answered, but I'm um, gonna answer the next one, which is uh, what are the risks? 
Um, you know, there's not really any risks here that you're not going to also get with feeding kibble or or other types of foods. I mean, when we go and get kibble, there's still recalls on food. Um, there's still the possibility that the food was contaminated while it was being packaged. Um, kibble only lasts two weeks. So when you open up a bag of kibble, you're supposed to use that bag in two weeks and still, you know, be sealing it and everything during those two weeks. Um, there's still risks associated with kibble and, um, you know, there's, it, there's recalls because dogs die from it. Um, there's uh, salmonella that's found in it. Um, all of those things are associated with kibble. So, um, you know, when you look at raw and you're like, okay, well, the risks are um, you could, you might have salmonella or, um, you know, it might go bad. Um, that's kind of still all the same thing with uh, kibble. And when you prepare food for yourself, all these people who meal prep and stuff like that, um, you know, you have to just be careful and sanitize and make sure to use the food before it goes bad. Um, there's really no extra risks um, between preparing food for your dog versus preparing food for your family. Uh, now there is the risk of, for example, raw pork um, having um, worms or bacteria. And that's really simple, easy fix is just freezing the meat. Um, some places recommend to freeze meat for up to five weeks. Um, so, if, you know, if you're worried about that, you can freeze it um, and then, you know, feed it afterwards. So to answer the question, I don't feel like there's any extra risks with raw compared to anything else that you might be feeding. Uh, Luke, I a uh, Pelli 19. Uh, I like it. I'm just concerned that it might be too much of a change for my dog's stomach. Oh, for sure. Okay, so switching from kibble to raw is going to be hard on your dog's stomach. And it depends on um, your dog and your situation of how you want to do it. Uh, that is where people, I think, go wrong the most often is they switch over to, you know, feeding a raw meal. The dog gets sick and they're like, see, I, I should have listened to all of those veterinarian blogs. This is just going to make my dog super sick and I'm never going to feed it again. Well, it's the transition um, of what, that's why it made your dog sick. It wasn't the food itself necessarily. It's just your dog's used to digesting one thing. Now it's something totally different and they have diarrhea. So the point of switching over is you have to transition and stick with it. Um, there's different ways of transitioning. Uh, I've had dogs where I've gotten them and they were just on such bad quality kibble that I didn't even want to do the slow transition. I just immediately started feeding them raw. Um, they're young and healthy. They can go a few days with diarrhea. It's not going to hurt them. Now, if you want to be more cautious, I definitely encourage you um, to do that if that's what you're more comfortable with, is switch over slowly. So gradually every day decrease a little bit of kibble, increase a little bit of raw food. And this will be a little bit easier for your dog to do. Um, but either way, you do need to expect um, vomiting, diarrhea, and just, um, you know, changes in your dog for a couple of weeks while you're doing this. And then they're going to get used to it and they're going to be a lot better, a lot healthier, uh, and everything will, will calm down with their stomach. Avery, uh, is it okay to do half kibble, half raw diet? Um, I don't really quite see the, the point in this on a health perspective, but um, if it's for budget, uh, yeah, that's definitely something you can do. Half raw, half kibble in order to save money. Um, but then at the end of the day, like, are you really saving money? Because uh, like I said, the high quality kibble is so expensive. I definitely never use the argument that um, it can be cheaper to just feed dry food. Um, and then if you are using a low quality kibble and then feeding raw, it really might just make your dog's stomach more upset. Bobby Dretcher, if someone knew nothing about feeding raw, what would be some resources you would suggest to learn about proper balanced nutrition and vitamins? So that's a good question. Um, you know, where I started off with was um, looking through books and just uh, recipes for dogs. Uh, I think that was really easy way to kind of like ease into doing raw. Um, resources, I would definitely recommend Dr. Karen Becker. Uh, you constantly hear people say uh, veterinarians do not recommend feeding raw. That's 100% wrong. 
Um, there's tons of veterinarians that are now supporting a raw diet and Dr. Karen Becker has been supporting raw for I think a couple of decades now and um, she's a great resource and she really talks about a lot of different things when it comes to feeding dogs raw food and she has a YouTube channel and she has a blog and a website so um, there's a lot of information that you can get from her. Minecraft Torty, what fruits and veggies would you tell new raw feeders to not feed their animals? Okay, so that's a good question. Uh, for people who are, you know, starting out and just getting into trying different fruits and vegetables for dogs, uh, one of the first things that comes to mind is tomatoes. Uh, we as humans love tomatoes. That's not something that's recommended for dogs um, or even um, birds either. Uh, like I see people trying to feed uh, tomatoes to their parrots, uh, to their dogs. Um, that's part of the nightshade family. And so like anything part of the nightshade family like that, eggplant, um, that's going to just upset their stomach. Um, it's, you know, not going to kill them necessarily, but it's not going to be comfortable for them when they're digesting it. And so that's something that you should avoid feeding is things like that. What other things? Uh, you know, just the basics, uh, onions, mushrooms, garlic, those are things that you should be avoiding when feeding your dogs. When you get more into raw, you start to understand how to use garlic because that is something that um, I do include in my dog's food. But uh, when you're just getting started, I would say just start with the basics and not things like that. Garlic is used um, as pest control and things like that. Um, it is uh, actually like a natural antibiotic, so you want to learn how to use it. Shia 2012, how to balance out portions to the weight of the dog. So this is uh, very individual based and I feel like there's just no one way to say like this is how much your dog should eat. I think it really needs to be a trial and error type of thing. Um, start off with the amount that you would feed if you were feeding kibble and just kind of go from there. Um, I know for my dogs they eat a lot more um, than most people. Um, I've seen some portions like on Instagram or Pinterest of what the dogs are eating and to me those portions are tiny compared to what I'm feeding my dogs. Um, but my dogs are super, super active. So just do it based on their weight. Um, if they're a little thin, then you need to increase it. If they're getting a little bit chubby, you need to decrease it. And you'll be able to find just, you know, the perfect amount um, for your dog. And for each of your dogs, um, each of my dogs, it's, you know, something different. Uh, Luna is fixed and so she tends to have the smallest amount because she does gain weight very easily now. Uh, whereas none of my other ones are, so you know they uh, eat a lot. Billy W one three two. What is that orange powder? Oh, okay. So this was a picture that I put up uh, when I was saying that I was going to do this Q and A video. The orange powder is uh, turmeric, and that is a root. Uh, it's ground down into a powder, sometimes used as you know for seasoning or things like that. Um, I use it for my animals because it has a lot of really good properties, um, anti-inflammatory, it's great for allergies, and it can also be used um, for uh, ticks and fleas, uh, just kind of, they seem to not like the way the dogs taste, I guess, with that um, in their digestive system. So um, that's oh, some of the reasons that I use it, but I'll try to do a video where I go over a lot of the different types of natural supplements you can add to a raw diet. D flow. How did you transition your dogs to a raw diet? Oh, I feel like I kind of already answered that one in the last one. Um, it depends on the dog and depends on the situation. Um, some of them I like to switch over immediately. Some of them I did gradually. Um, for myself, when I first started, uh, I started doing um, like cooking and doing recipes and stuff for my dogs. Um, and that was fun. Um, now I realize that like you actually don't need to put the effort into it unless like you want to because you know you're enjoying it. Um, the raw food is better for them and just super quick and easy. Um, so yeah that's a quick answer as to how I started and how I transitioned the dogs. Uh, what benefits have you physically seen when you've switched to raw? Uh, so some of the benefits that you're going to see is that your dogs are going to have a much softer coat. They're not going to shed as much. They're also not going to poop as much. But there's a lot of enzymes in kibble. Uh, that they just kind of like poop everything out and so with raw um, a lot of it's uh, moisture, water, and it's going to be absor absorbed by the body more. So overall less poop. Um, that's some of the really big ones. Less shedding. I can't tell you the amount of people that complain about the way that corgis shed and 
it I've never had that issue. Um, I don't think corgis shed that much. And the dogs will also have just a lot more energy. And I don't mean like they'll be hyperactive or anything. Like, no, they'll just feel good and um, be more alert, more awake, um, and just, you know, ready to, to get moving. Cheeky Bird, my mother is anti-raw food diet due to the amount of effort needed and the smell. How do I, I guess, convince her? Hmm, as for smell, uh, I feel like the only thing that smells is organ. Um, Oregon does smell pretty intense and it actually smells worse when you cook it. How to convince her? I would say just try to give her resources, show how it's going to make the dogs healthier and all of that and maybe she'll come around. Um, it is a lot of effort uh, so maybe you can try saying um, that you'll do most of it or things like that. Um, try to put a lot of like your own effort into it. Uh, that might help convince your parents. Uh, some parents just aren't going to let you and you know sometimes you do have to just wait till you get older and live in your own house in order to make decisions for your pets and things like that. And that's just unfortunate, but that's the reality. Thank you so much for watching this video about raw diets. I hope I was able to answer a lot of your questions. Thank you so much for sending me all of those questions on Instagram and YouTube. Um, let me know what other information you want to know about raw diets or if you want a longer explanation of any of the information in this video. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.